Thank you for joining us for KSAT News at 9. I'm Courtney Friedman. Here's what's coming up tonight. A look at how the city and county's new stay home work safe orders are going to be enforced. Plus, in just a few hours, New Braunfels is joining the growing list of Texas counties and cities to enact these types of orders. We're also learning more about why the number of COVID-19 cases is different depending on where you check. But first, a third death related to COVID-19 confirmed here locally today. Bear County and the city of San Antonio say the woman was in her 50s, had chronic underlying health conditions, and was being treated at Mission Trail Baptist Hospital. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases is up to 84. 36 are travel related. 12 cases were contracted through exposure to a person who previously tested positive. 27 cases are community spread and the rest are still under investigation. Statewide, DSHS is now reporting nearly 1,000 cases in Texas and 12, de 12 deaths. Nationally, more than 200 COVID-19 deaths were reported just today. That makes today the single deadliest day in reported coronavirus deaths in the U.S. In total, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is reporting more than 54,000 cases and more than 700 deaths. And globally, Johns Hopkins University and Medicine is saying there are more than 467,000 cases and more than 21,000 deaths. A reminder, Johns Hopkins includes presumptive positive cases in its count. Back here at home, we've learned the last group of cruise ship evacuees at JBSA Lackland have been released from their two week quarantine. More than 380 Americans have been housed at JBSA Lackland since February. Among the three groups, at least a dozen tested positive for COVID-19. The Department of Health and Human Services says all patients have been cleared medically. Stay home work safe is in effect in Bear County and San Antonio. So how do the county and city plan to enforce these measures? While officers and deputies won't be actively looking for people who are violating the order, law enforcement will still be responding to complaints. But for now, their focus will be on businesses that are not complying. There are penalties for violations up to a $2,000 fine for the city and the county's penalties are up to $1,000 in a fine or six months in jail. Similar orders taking effect across the state of Texas in an effort to combat the spread of the coronavirus. New Braunfels is just hours away from implementing its own order. It comes as two more positive cases of COVID-19 were reported in Comal County today, bringing it to a total of seven. Tiffany Huertas was in New Braunfels today. She gives us a look at how the community is coming together during these challenging times. People are put in a situation that a lot of people are now without work, so they don't have that income stream. Donald Duncan spent time volunteering today at New Braunfels Food Bank. I'm retired, I'm available, and so what better thing to be doing with my time? They set up a drive through service to help those in need. We probably are seeing about 35 to 40 percent more traffic than our normal distribution. The city's new order is set to go into effect at midnight, but the food bank will stay open because it falls under essential services. Like the city of San Antonio and Bear County's orders, other places that are also exempt include hospitals, grocery stores, and gas stations. The order says residents are allowed to enjoy the outdoors while maintaining social distancing. The city of New Braunfels is taking extra measures to keep the community safe, including putting up signs near the playgrounds and closing them down. Yeah. Pat Youngblood and his family spent their Wednesday afternoon at the park and believes the city is doing everything they can to keep everyone safe. As long as we can adhere to their, their direction and so forth, I think that it will eventually uh, hopefully dissipate the uh, the virus. Pat says the community is showing its support for one another. On all the Facebook posts for the neighborhoods, people giving away milk, people sharing their bread, their eggs, all that good thing. So I feel, I think that a lot of people in New Braunfels are sticking together, pulling together and uh, making sure that the, everybody has what they need. For the nine, Tiffany Huertas. New tonight, San Marcos has also announced it is implementing a stay home work safe order, but their order includes a curfew. It goes into effect tomorrow night at 11. Residents will still be able to do things like grocery shop, pick up medication at a pharmacy and go outside for exercise. Businesses deemed essential will also be allowed to stay open. A curfew will be enacted nightly from 11 p.m. until 4 a.m. And there are some exceptions for now. The order is scheduled to be in effect until April 10th. Child abuse predicted to rise as families stuck at home during the COVID-19 self-quarantine period. Experts say it's similar to what happens during summer or winter break. Cases spike. 
Typically, teachers and health care providers see the children often. They're the ones trained to look for signs of abuse, but since they are no longer seeing the children, they're not able to assess their home situation. That's why local experts are asking the community to keep their eyes peeled and make life-saving reports to the child abuse hotline. Even if you're delivering a package or delivering food, if you're a delivery person, mail person, please report it. If you suspect it and you have that feeling, you don't need to know if it's, if it's real or not. We have investigators to investigate that. Kim Abernathy is the CEO of Child Safe, which offers trauma-focused care for children who have been abused or neglected. She says the calls you make to the child abuse hotline are anonymous. She also wants people to know even though the physical office is closed, Child Safe services will continue. They're doing interviews at SAPD and offering consistent telecounseling by phone or video. The child abuse hotline number has been on your screen. It's 1-800-252-5400. Another big concern, unemployment. More businesses are being forced to cut hours or lay workers off. Millions have been left without jobs. Experts suggest if you find yourself in this situation to be vigilant about monitoring expenses. Look at your payments to see which ones can be adjusted and reach out to creditors to see who is willing to work with you. The banks, the credit card companies, everybody is willing uh, to make allowances at this point in time. Right now on our website, we have a guide to unemployment benefits for Texans laid off during this pandemic. During this time, we're all looking for something to do to help out. Here's one option, donate plastic. Precinct 4 Bear County Commissioner Tommy Calvert says a group of 3D printer owners are volunteering their time to produce more than 500 protective face shields per day to get to medical staff, but they need supplies. They are looking for different types of filament, clear bins that are 12 by 12 and clear thin plastic bigger than a foot long. They will be taking donations at two locations at the can opener labs on Safari Street and the Bear County Fire Marshal's office on Southton Road. The San Antonio Food Bank is having to change its policy. Starting this Saturday, they will no longer participate in the individual on-site mobile or food fair distributions. Food Bank partners received an email about the change, which was due to, quote, heightened product and safety procedures, end quote. This change means some food pantries will not have enough food to provide for the areas they cover. This is the case for Eagles Flight Advocacy, an outreach who just last week served more than 2,000 people. We usually serve about 200 people a day through our food pantry. We're going to be so limited on what we can do and who we can reach. The county mega sites will distribute food and lunch and dinner meals, but we have a list of those locations right now on our website. Let's turn to tonight's 9 at 9. El Salvador could have its least violent month in decades. The FDA issues a warning about possible EpiPen malfunctions and a roundup of the pandemic and how it's impacting communities around the world. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. In El Salvador, the country reported two consecutive days with zero homicides. Murders had been reported daily until Sunday. If that trend continues, March could become the least violent month in recent decades. The FDA is warning about the possibility of EpiPen malfunctions. The agency says the devices could become difficult to remove from their carrier tubes or could be accidentally activated. Pfizer and Mylan will replace defective devices for free. Waffle House is closing more than 350 of its locations due to the coronavirus pandemic. More than 1,600 locations, though, will remain open. In Boston, cameras captured manholes exploding near a train station. Fire and smoke could be seen gushing out of the ground. A witness said one of the explosions sent a manhole cover 30 feet into the air. The underground fires prompted authorities to shut down the commuter station. A utility company blamed equipment failure, but no injuries were reported. Americans are stockpiling eggs during the coronavirus outbreak as they cook more meals at home. And that's leading to supply shortages and a spike in prices at some supermarkets. According to the most recent Nielsen data, egg sales went up 44% for the week ending during March 14th compared to a year ago. Meanwhile, wholesale egg prices have risen 180% since the beginning of March. An Iowa teen improvises after a marathon he was supposed to run in California was canceled. With the encouragement of his friends, he decided to run on his own. And it was really them who pushed me towards um, doing this thing after I lost basically all motivation. His friends even participated, some riding bikes.
A marathon is like intense, but it's like, um, it's also relaxing at the same time. The team finished the marathon in two hours and 47 minutes. The National Cathedral in Washington is stepping up to help in the battle against coronavirus. The cathedral donated 5,000 respirator masks today. In the midst of so many difficult things going on in our city and across our country, had a little bit of grace at the cathedral this week. We discovered that we had in the crypt uh, thousands of N95 masks that we have had here at the cathedral since the uh, possible uh, outbreak of avian bird flu years ago. 3,000 masks were delivered to Georgetown University Hospital and 2,000 went to Children's National. A new Netflix show called Cooked with Cannabis is debuting on April 20th or 420. The show challenges chefs to make dishes using ingredients infused with marijuana. An Elton John will host an hour-long benefit special Sunday night to raise money for frontline healthcare workers and first responders. It's called Fox Presents the I Heart Living Room Concert for America. Included in the lineup, Alicia Keys, the Backstreet Boys, Billie Eilish, Billy Joe Armstrong, Mariah Carey, and Tim McGraw. All the artists will appear from their own homes. To read more about these stories, head to ksat.com. We'll be back in one minute. Stay with us. The population in the Bear County Jail is down by more than 500 inmates since last week. This after local officials initiated prevention efforts to stop the spread of COVID-19. The Sheriff's Office released some nonviolent offenders and limited the number of people being brought in accused of nonviolent crimes. A KSAT source familiar with the jail's population says it would be the best way to have it just to 2,000 inmates. To date, no inmates or personnel inside the jail have tested positive for COVID-19. Texas Med Clinic now offering COVID-19 testing to patients who meet San Antonio Metro Health criteria. This news comes as frustration grows over the country's inability to test more people. Earlier today, Steve Spreester talked to Texas Med Clinic's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. David Goode, about this news and what it means. Here are some highlights from that conversation. The pipeline has started to open. Uh, while testing is still not readily available, uh, we do, uh, for the moment, have a steady supply of tests. We started testing really this past Friday. Our uh, lab partner, Quest, opened up a testing facility or opened their testing facility in Dallas with the capability of doing testing for the COVID-19. Uh, we've been sending specimens um, starting Friday and Saturday. Um, they've been uh, promising a 48-hour turnaround and up to now have been delivering in less time than that. I want to be clear, just because you have them doesn't mean anybody can just walk into a Texas Med Clinic and get a COVID-19 test, correct? That's correct. I mean, we have them, but it's still a limited number. The pipeline is not flowing freely at this point, um, so we are following the Metro Health Guidelines. Uh, for who gets tested. We're also uh, normally uh, doing a rapid strep and a rapid flu uh, before we uh, do the COVID test and only if those are negative uh, would we proceed with doing the COVID test, assuming the person is a candidate for testing according to the guidelines. We have to be wearing personal protective equipment in order, you know, really to treat patients right now uh, we've changed our procedures so that we're trying to keep patients from gathering in the lobby. We're trying to limit it to one patient in the lobby at a time. No one's sitting in the lobby. We're trying to get people into rooms immediately so we can take care of processing all of their paperwork. And we're asking patients to wait in their cars if necessary or outside to queue up out there before they come into the clinic. Um, but then we are, um, when we're working with patients, are wearing personal protective equipment. Um, Texas Med Clinic has been preparing for some type of pandemic for about 10 years now. We believe we have a sufficient supply of personal protective equipment to be able to offer this service to our communities for months to come. 
Hi there, hope you had a great Wednesday. So for the most part, today just sunny and pretty hot for this time of year. But did you see the fog this morning? If you didn't, don't worry, here's the view on time lapse. It rolled in during the six o'clock hour, hung around until about 11, 11.30 or so. And once it was gone, things really heated up, but it made for a cool view on our time lapse for today. Tomorrow, fairly similar, especially in the morning. We'll have another chance of some fog, but it should not be as dense or as widespread as the fog we saw this morning. So patchy fog and cloudy skies to start on Thursday. Then we'll see plenty of clearing into the afternoon and that'll give us another very warm afternoon with high temperatures in the upper 80s and low 90s. Things will stay warm and humid Friday and on Saturday that's when we'll see some changes at the hands of a Pacific cool front. So you see the temperatures behind this front, upper 70s, low 80s, so not a whole lot of cold air behind this front at all. But what this front will do is bring us some nice drier air by the weekend and maybe also a couple of spotty showers. So here's how things look on Futurecast the next couple of days is no chance of rain but as we get into early Saturday as this Pacific cool front is approaching San Antonio we'll have a 20 percent chance of an early shower or non-severe storm early in the day with better chances of a few more showers down on the coastal bend through early Saturday afternoon then that front clears out completely and we'll see some nice dry air settle in for the weekend and what that means is that things are going to be very comfortable Saturday into Sunday when we get our temperatures down a little bit and also some drier air in place so looking really good as we head into the weekend. Early next week, we have some changes of showers and thunderstorms returning to the forecast. Some additional cloud cover there for a few days as well, but temperatures a bit more seasonable uh, with high temperatures there in the upper 70s and low 80s. Tonight, the Senate is working to pass a $2 trillion stimulus bill in response to the coronavirus pandemic. The goal is to help unemployed Americans, businesses forced to close, and hospitals struggling to stay ahead of the COVID-19 virus. The package includes direct payments to individuals and families up to $2,400. Student loan payments would be suspended until September. It also significantly boosts unemployment insurance benefits and provides billions of dollars worth of loans for distressed companies and small businesses. The Senate is going to stand together, act together, and pass this historic relief package today. To all Americans, I say help is on the way, big help and quick help. If passed, this would be the biggest economic relief bill in American history. Turning to tonight's top stories, shelter in place isn't just for civilians, it's now for troops. They're also staying put. Defense Secretary Mark Esper has frozen the movements of all overseas troops for 60 days due to the coronavirus pandemic. The freeze works in both directions. Troops that were supposed to come home will now have to wait. And the same is true for military personnel in the U.S. who were scheduled to deploy overseas. In all, the freeze is expected to affect about 90,000 service members. There are several exceptions to the fleet the freeze. Most notably, naval vessels scheduled to return to the U.S. will sail as planned. More than 200 service members have tested positive for COVID-19. Amazon reporting that an employee in its Staten Island Fulfillment Center has tested positive for COVID-19. The last day that person was at work was March 11th. Other positive cases have been reported at Amazon facilities in Texas, California, Florida, Kentucky, Michigan, Oklahoma, and Connecticut. The online retailer has temporarily closed some sites, but has largely refrained from mass closures. In the loneliness of the quarantine, if it's kicked in, a new app wants you to connect with someone else stuck at home. It's called Quarantine Chat. Through the app dial-up, you can have a conversation with a random person. Once signed up, you'll get a call with the ID Quarantine Chat. You pick up and you'll get matched with another user. The company says your information stays private and your match only sees your username. If you've been following updates on the confirmed cases of the new coronavirus in Texas, then you may have noticed different numbers coming from different websites. It's been a little bit confusing, but hopefully that will change in the next few days. RJ Marquez tells us why. 
The Texas Tribune reports that state officials are changing the way COVID-19 confirmed cases are reported due to several discrepancies with the overall numbers. Before today, the state was tracking cases by county of residents, so that basically meant if a UT student from San Antonio was infected and treated in Austin, that case would go toward Bear County's overall numbers. But some counties were not on the same page and had been reporting anyone who tested positive in that jurisdiction. Officials with the Texas Department of Health Services told the Tribune that the state its new method will now use public numbers directly from local jurisdictions. The state was previously relying on the official case forms from local health departments, but those numbers had been coming in later than the public updates. Another issue has been national reporting of state-by-state -state cases. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention was lagging behind Texas' numbers, but now directly links its map to state health departments, including ours. The CDC also does not confirm presumptive cases, but another reliable source, Johns Hopkins University, does. Johns Hopkins has a real-time map of COVID-19 cases that include presumptive positive cases. As of 3.30 p.m. Wednesday, Johns Hopkins confirmed 1,143 cases in Texas, while the state had reported 974. The numbers will inevitably fluctuate and due to limited testing are most likely being undercounted. Bottom line, health experts say Texans should look to their local health authorities for the best data. For The Nine, RJ Marcus. He is finally back home. Our KSAT co-worker who was stuck in Argentina under a mandatory quarantine ending his journey to the Alamo City. After two canceled flights a whole day and night in the airport and then four flights home, Sebastian Hovell can now rest easy. Today I caught up with him and his wife and they are both happy campers. Relief. Relief, relief. Not the typical reaction after returning home from an incredible vacation in Argentina, visiting family and eating amazing food. That fun cut short when Argentina's government mandated a quarantine for all foreigners from countries affected by COVID-19. The last time we spoke to KSAT IT employee Sebastian Hovell, he had finished that quarantine and made it to the Buenos Aires airport, where he stayed for 24 hours after two flights were canceled. Now I'm sleep, not eating because all the vending machines were out of food, they were out of drinks. It was tough seeing some of these people just, you know, being in worse situations than I were. You can feel the tension in the air. You can see, you can see people just starting to break down, just not knowing if they're going to go home, when they're going to go home. Luckily, he made it on a flight to Chile, then flew from Santiago to Atlanta to Houston and finally to San Antonio. A huge relief to his wife, Amelia. I missed him. I couldn't sleep without him, so. Yeah, I know. It was, was so, was this so nerve-wracking for you? Yeah, you call me every day saying my, my flight was canceled. And like, They're happily reunited, but social distancing to be safe. It's been tough. I've been wanting to hug her and, and kiss her, but I, I think it's, it's for the best that I give that 14 days time. Sebastian says he's excited to finally get back to work. He'll be doing that remotely from home. And we're glad to have him back. As we've reported, international border closures and travel restrictions have left more than 13,000 Americans stranded in foreign countries across the world. Many of those people are in Peru, where Sebastian was originally routed. Hey guys, for today's trending segment, we're doing something a little bit different. We posted a story earlier today on KSAT.com of some of the new movies that you could see from home because uh, several movie theaters have of course shut down due to the coronavirus pandemic. So these companies decided to release all this stuff for streaming and on-demand users. The first movie that we're gonna look at here is Onward. That of course is the new Pixar movie. This was actually released in early March, but they have now moved it to streaming digital. Uh, you can find that on several different platforms like iTunes and Google Play. If you wanna hold off and you are a Disney Plus member, you can get that for free starting April 3rd. Next movie here, Birds of Prey. That of course is the uh, pretty popular Harley Quinn movie that had been out for a little bit that is now completely moved over to digital. That is available on Amazon Prime, Fandango Now. And if you wanna hold off and not pay the $20 for that, starting April 7th, they will have that available for rent. That's gonna be about $5. A couple other movies here that we looked at, The Invisible Man, that is a psychological thriller. Uh, that's gonna be available on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Prime. That was released February 28th. That has been completely moved over. And Bloodshot, this new Vin Diesel movie. I didn't know this guy did anything other than Fast and the Furious movies. 
Uh, that's available on several different platforms, including Amazon Prime and iTunes. And again, all these movies are costing about $20, so uh, that's just kind of keep that in mind when you want to purchase some of these. Another movie we looked at here, this one called The Hunt. I did not know that this movie was even coming out, but it looks really exciting. It's from the producers of Get Out, Jason Blum, Blumhouse, and uh, apparently people are hunted for sports. So there you go. If you want to spend your time watching some of that, it's uh, kind of one of those sort of cabin in the woods type movies. So uh, I think that'd be kind of fun to check out. That's available all over the place. And also want to let you guys know that Frozen 2 is now available on Disney Plus for free. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is available on all these other platforms. They have not decided yet when it will be on Disney Plus. So if you guys want more information on all these movies, we have links to all of this, including all these different platforms. All you gotta do is go to ksat.com, check out this article, and I will check back in with you guys later. Bye. Cadbury Cream Eggs. Thank you so much for watching the news at 9. Don't forget to catch the night beat starts at 10. Have a great night.